Hello and welcome to Life at the Met, a show all about Belfast Metropolitan College and its students. I'm Georgia Taggart. And I'm Lee McElaine and coming up on today's programme. Graduation Day, one of the highlights of the academic year for our higher education students, will bring you a flavour of this fantastic day of celebration. We'll look at over 50 years of journalism training at Belfast Met, from the old manual typewriters back in the day to today's training in 21st century digital journalism. And if you're thinking of upskilling and taking a course at the college, we have all the information you need about how to enrol. That's all coming up later, but first, Graduation Day is a landmark for students. It's a time to celebrate achievement and the end of all that studying. Belfast Met Graduation Day was held a few weeks ago, and here's a look at some of the highlights of the day. Nearly 300 students gathered for two ceremonies at Titanic Belfast with friends and family to mark this very special day and receive their award. They heard college's chief executive and principal, Mary Therese McGivern, tell graduates that being at the college has given them tools and tenacity to problem solve and to deal with the uncertainties that the world may hold. We have not given you a map, she said, but a compass so that you can navigate the future. For many, it was a day that they'll never forget. Today was a really important day for me. Um, I've been working really hard over the past two years um, to achieve my level five in leadership and management within health and social care. Um, it's now a requirement across the health and social care sector, so it meant a lot today that I have put in so much work and so much time, and today I'm able to walk away with a really good qualification that I'll be able to use right across Northern Ireland. So it means the world in a ditch after. <laughs> I would recommend uh, people to study at uh, Belfast Metropolitan College. The lecturers are so amazing, you know, they, they help you through your studies, you know, wherever you are struggling, they, they will assist you, you know, to better your grade and, uh, you know, I'm a typical example of that. At every graduation ceremony, the college awards a special honorary fellowship to an outstanding individual, recognising a significant contribution they've made to our city. This year's award went to Patrick McAlliske, Managing Director of Cloud Provider, Novosco. This has not, never happened to me before, so getting an honorary fellow it was something very foreign. Um, I'd been to graduations before, but I hadn't been to one where I was personally involved. And I think it's fantastic to see the number of people, particularly IT sector. You can see that there's a buzz, there's a future uh, you know, benefit to the Northern Ireland economy with IT graduates. So hopefully lots of the people there today who graduated will end up potentially as employees of Novosco or just being employed in the IT sector. So it's, there's a real buzz about the uh, Belfast Met and there's also a real buzz here today. So it was great, great to be involved in it and I'd like to thank Belfast Met for giving me that opportunity. We asked Mr McAlliske, as an employer, what advice would he give to those graduating and new to the job market? Continue to develop your soft skills throughout your life. So, you know, practicing the things that are really important. You know, when you give your first impression to somebody in an interview, having a firm handshake is so, so important. Um, you know, finding a job that you truly love. So finding something that you really, really gets you up in the morning that doesn't feel like work, I think. That's the ultimate, is find, find, find something that you love doing, make it your career and then you know, it'll never feel like work. And I suppose, uh, finally, always have the ability to say yes. So, you know, when you get these things, it's sometimes it's easy to just go, nah, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, who knows what might happen when you say yes. That was Patrick McAlliske of Novosco, and joining us now is Elaine Harton, Belfast Met's Chief Operating Officer. Well, it looks like it was a great day. It was a fabulous day. Graduation is one of my favourite days of the college year um, and it's just so much fun to be involved in it and you can, it's a real honour to work in an organisation that changes so many lives and to be part of that is just a real privilege for me. I'm sure a lot of organisation goes in. Could you tell me a bit more about that? A huge organisation, it's a real team effort. Um, everybody in the college comes together led by um, the marketing team under the leadership of Michelle McCauley. Um, we've been doing it for 110 years, so I think you know we do have a track record and, and people know what to do. Um, however, like anything that goes well, people underestimate the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes on it. Um, and thankfully there were no hiccups and, and everything went really smoothly and, and others assume it, it's easy. And it's not. There must be a real sense of pride for the tutors and staff. Oh, there absolutely is. And I think that's really evident within the graduation ceremony. We do a vox pop of, um, from 
staff right across the college who've been involved with students and it's just it's always very funny and it's always, always very endearing and you can see whenever you watch the graduation the graduates actually responding um, in some of those areas where they're smaller classes they name every learner and I just think that's really that personal touch is really really important and the sense of pride from everyone you know we have receptions we have our library staff we have some of our state staff talking on that and acknowledging you know how important the students are and how proud everybody in the college is and I have to say I'm very proud to be part of an organisation that does that. How does the college decide who to um, honour every year from the community? The college objective is to deliver both economic development and social inclusion. So whenever we take a view, look at the community and, and people that we'd like to honour, we try to find people who actually represent or have made changes across both or, or one of those areas. So this year um, we had a list, a long list of people, and we go through it against those who we believe have made a contribution to economic development and or social inclusion. So Patrick McAlisky, given his role um, in developing a, an Indigenous Northern Ireland business that has now got global reach, um, was a really important contributor to that. And Patrick not only works with um, industry in Northern Ireland, he's also done quite a lot of contributions to the college itself. Um, and given we do a lot of IT work, we're um, very hopeful that many of our graduates will actually end up working with Patrick or companies like his. What was the highlight of the day for you? Um, highlight of the day for me, th there's so many as you go through the entire day. I, I just love the pomp and ceremony of the whole thing. I love the fact you get dressed up in a gown. Like how many people have a job where you get to wear a gown and, and get dressed up and do that. I, I love all of that and that's a very personal thing. I think for me it is seeing how excited and happy and proud everybody is to be there. Um, the graduates are there but so are their family and friends and their loved ones and seeing that joy and especially whenever people are going up because it can be quite sombre and everybody's very serious. And then occasionally you'll get a whip from the crowd where somebody just can't contain their excitement. And it's just wonderful to feel that joy and see that. I think personally for me, I have the privilege of actually handing out the certificates at one of the ceremonies. And to be able to personally congratulate over 200 graduates on the day is a real privilege. Um, and I always love doing that. And I almost try to fight with my colleagues to get to do both ceremonies, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to. <laughs> um, is there any um, stories of students who have interest in achievements to you? I don't think there's any student in Belfast Met who doesn't have an interesting story. I think everybody's got their own story in their own life. Um, so everybody's got an interesting story. Many journeys have not been easy. Uh, many of the people who come to Belfast Met come because they haven't been successful in whatever they've done before and, and for some college, the college is a second chance. Um, and every story, whenever you dig in behind it, will have something there. Probably highlights for me this year, there was one graduate who'd had a baby who was weeks old who was actually at the ceremony with her and I think that was absolutely fantastic and I'm a mother myself, to think that you would be able to get yourself to graduation while pregnant and having a small child, that is a, a real, real achievement. Um, and then we had quite a number of staff who actually received um, certificates and had graduated and I think that's a real sign that learning never stops. Lee and myself are graduating in the next couple of years, do you have any advice for us? I think overall um, graduation is a real achievement actually getting to, to graduate and it's a milestone in, in the journey as you go through. Um, looking at the time across that journey and you know um, your course and everything you do and that is part of that journey I think enjoy it. I think grab every opportunity that comes your way. Um, within the college we're very lucky because we've got lots of industry specialists who actually teach and those people you can learn so much from not necessarily just in the classroom but also by taking advice and asking them um, for their advice and direction as they as they go forward and, and they work through it. Um, in terms of the actual graduation day itself, it's absolutely enjoy it. You know, make sure you celebrate it with um, your loved ones and your people there and your, your colleagues. And the other lovely thing about graduation is it happens after the course is finished, so it's a chance to reconnect. Um, and the friends that you make at college or university or wherever you are, many of those will go through your, you and your life and your career. So making those connections and keeping them open are really important. Um, and you know, it, it's about having fun. And a really practical one is make sure your heels aren't too high. Well, Elaine, it was lovely hearing from you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, that big day isn't far away for both of us. We're looking forward to graduating with a HND in broadcast journalism. Belfast Met has been training journalists for 50 years. Just before we introduce our next guest, here's a quick message from one of our most famous. Hello, I'm Eamon Holmes, and yes, I made it at the Met too. Though back in 1979, we called it the College of Business Studies. Well, we didn't call it the College of Business Studies. We called it the College of Knowledge, which 
was somewhat ironic. But anyway, no, we did it there. I was doing my NCTJ, my journalism course uh, there at the time. And that prepared me for a career in journalism and doing wonderful jobs like the one I'm doing today here from the This Morning studio. And uh, it was the foundation for any legal knowledge that I have, for any typing ability that I have, uh, but sadly not for any shorthand that I have because I never possessed that skill. Uh, I never got very far with shorthand nor indeed have I ever had a need for shorthand, but um, there we go. I was taught it anyway uh, there at the College of Business Studies. And w what I learned back then obviously did stay with me throughout life and, and throughout my uh, professional career. You'll hear people like me reminiscing about the past and the history uh, off the Met, but remember it is people like you who are the future and what the Met is all about and the Met has been uh, leading the city of Belfast to work for 110 years. I am the past, you are the future, go out there, represent the Met well and uh, good luck. So from me to you, yeah, I made it at the Met too. An encouraging word from one of our most famous alumni, Eamon Holmes. I thank you to him for recording that special message to us in the This Morning studio. With us in the studio now is Aidan Brown, who you may recognise from our TV screens. Aidan studied broadcast journalism and now lectures at the Met. And Dr John Coulter, who coordinates the HND in broadcast journalism. A very warm welcome to both of you. John, 50 years of journalism training. I'm sure you've seen a few wee changes. There's been quite a few years uh, of uh, changes over the time. I would say the big change that we've seen in journalist training is the move from typewriters battering away in those clattering typewriters in the 1970s. The sound in the newsrooms in those days was sometimes deafening, but nowadays it's all touch-type computers and it's just a gentle clatter uh, in the newsrooms these days. What we've also seen as well, Lee, in the terms of changes has been changes in the curriculum. And by that I mean it was used to be 40 years ago whenever I entered journalism, it was just uh, newspapers or broadcast. Now it's multivocational. The journalist of today has to be a jack of all trades. They have to be a camera person, they have to be a sound person, they have to be a writer, they have to be a photographer, you name it. The days of just single uh, skills are all over. It's multi-skilled now. And Aidan, uh, you graduated in journalism yourself. Can you tell us how that has helped you um, working now at UTV? It was very helpful because the lectures which we had when I did the journalism course on a part-time basis were all working in the industry and I think that's the strength of what Belfast Met offers is that you have Linda Brands who's worked in network television, Dr John Coulter who's worked in TV, radio and print and other staff who can really advise students about what's happening in the industry at the moment and that helps shape your preparation for entering the world of work. And John, what are some of the modules that pitch students take on the course? Well, Lee, some of the most important modules today are law and ethics and also social communication skills. We've got to build confidence in our students. We've got to have them that they are uh, not just media literate in terms of their schools, but legally literate and ethically sound. It's very dangerous given today's social media and especially with Twitter and all the legal mistakes that are happening on Twitter. We've got to send them out, not just confident that they can make the programmes, not just confident that they can find ideas and communicate those ideas, but communicate them in a way that is legally sound uh, and ethically judgmental. Well, these days journalism is studied at our new campus E3 on the Springfield Road. Here's a look around. <laughs> The E3 campus of Belfast Met College opened its doors in 2012. The first sod of this £18 million state-of-the-art building was turned back in 1998 by then President Bill Clinton. At 5,000 square metres, it accommodates 350 users per day, drawn from further and higher education students, start-up companies and local businesses. Facilities include animation and digital editing suites, as well as television and radio production studios, where learners like us get hands-on experience of producing digital media content. As trainees, we also have regular events where we can engage with professional journalists, 
media experts and even politicians to put our questioning skills to the test. I think that any healthy society and democracy requires us to have really well uh, talented and skilled journalists and it's very important that each generation brings forth its own crop of journalists. From what I can see here today we have some really talented journalists that we can look forward to. So Aidan, we're just seeing you recently there in the video clip um, hosting and any questions? If any, the course seems very hands-on and practical. I think it's essential really, Lee, and we're preparing journalists to go out there and work and, and what better format to use the contacts which staff had, particularly with any questions that Linda had, to bring MLAs in, to bring editors in. Students have the opportunity to engage with them and then the, the informal conversations afterwards are terribly, terribly important. Our students are enjoying great success with the Royal Television Society. I represent Belfast Met on the RTS committee and just being at their careers event in the Whitlow Hall in Queen's last week and seeing one of our students, Stacey Burns, actually comparing that event in, in Whitlow and people on the panel, Kieran Doherty, one of our former students who's managing director of Stellify and Raymond Lai from Disney and editors and getting a chance to, to speak to them and of course the great success we had at the Royal Television Society Student Awards last year were by in five categories. Belfast Met was first place in three of those and runner-up in second so we're enormously proud of the opportunities we give our students to showcase their talents uh, in a way which is going to bring them to the attention of employers and give them the opportunity to promote themselves while they're still students, make contacts which will be very beneficial as they go out to find work in the future. And John, there's one big highlight I believe, um, there's a trip to Budapest, is there? Yes, uh, we have links through the Erasmus programme uh, with a un our partner university uh, in Budapest and we go out there for a 12-day residential and basically we get a chance to integrate with journalism students, media students uh, from Budapest and also students from uh, other countries as well. For many of the students it's a chance to move out of Ireland, uh, a chance to sample European culture, to learn about journalistic practices in Hungary and especially enjoy some of the interaction uh, with other students uh, from different nations. And Aidan, um, the course has a lot of links with the industry, would you say? Absolutely essential. Uh, I think one of the great dangers that you could have would be if you had a course where a lecturer was saying, when I worked in industry, when I've been involved in television for 25 years, the, the development of technology is amazing. So all of our lecturers are out there working, they have links, they're coming back into classes and saying, look, this is what's happening with air speed, this is what's happening with weather graphics, this is what's happening on radio, with editing, all of those things are essential to help our students really get ahead and be best placed for getting work in the future, Lee. John, where can this course take you? There are two essential directions that the course can go in. First of all, it's a good springboard into what we call a top-up degree. That's where students will go to a university and they'll spend one year there upgrading their higher national diploma into an honours degree in journalism or media or a related subject. But such are the skills that the students learn on the HND that you can compete directly for work. And we've had students in the past compete for work and successfully are working in journalism, in broadcasting and in public relations. So it's a very powerful piece of paper. We looked at graduation earlier and I gather it's traditional for tutors to send um, the students a congratulations mm -hmm. message. Will we take a wee look at yours? So as my students know, I'm a man of few words, so I just wanted to say well done and all the hard work, congratulations on graduating today and best of luck for the future. Well as my students also know, I'm also a person of few words, so I just want to tell you how I began my journalistic career way back in the 1970s. Now I didn't really want to go into journalism but I think I, I wanted to do music instead which was a really good career. Then of course there was the time I reported on something from Australia or was it Australia? Maybe it wasn't Australia, it could have been Austria. I wasn't too sure about that but maybe it's a really good place I think a good place to uh, edit from. And did I ever tell you about the time I got into a whole lot of trouble over a documentary that I made? Well, I mean this was mega trouble. This is the sort of stuff you really need to get into. Then there was the time I went to work for somebody that I can't remember who I went to work for. But it was a really exciting time. And then I think I became a lecturer. Did you know I became a lecturer? Hi. Are you awake? Teaching is really exciting. I mean, my students all think my lectures are absolutely brilliant. 
And as you can really hear, you know, they really did very well. And they think uh, there's no way that I'm a boring teacher from that point of view. I mean, it's just so exciting being a lecturer. I just love putting you all to sleep. Sorry, making you all waking up. Then there, then there was the time I was an education correspondent where I had to write about schools and things. Oh, that was exciting, going around visiting schools and things like that there. It really is good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Then there was that interview with a certain politician. Well, we're not going to that for obvious legal and ethical reasons, but it was a really good interview. And anyway, that's a lot of things that happened in my life, but I just wanted to say many congratulations on your achievement today. And it, it's close to Christmas, so happy, happy Christmas. It's, it's probably actually Christmas Day at this point, so thank, thanks for that, John. And there's a few other things I want to say, but in the meantime, happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like the course is great fun as well. John and Eden, thank you very much for joining us today. Finally today, some important dates for your diary if you're thinking about joining us at the Belfast Met to study. Open day for part-time courses is happening on Thursday the 11th of January 2018 between 12 noon and 2 p.m. and then again between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. at the Titanic Quarter campus of Belfast Met. If you're interested in studying on a full-time course, come along and find out more on Saturday the 27th of January 2018 between 9am and 2pm, again at the Titanic Quarter campus. And if Saturday doesn't suit you, there's another full-time open day on Thursday the 8th of February 2018 between 10am and 7pm. At each of these you can find out more about our courses and talk to tutors and staff about your options. And of course, there's more information on courses, open days and other events on our website at belfastmet.ac.uk or check our social media for updates. And just before we go, a huge congratulations to our Principal and Chief Executive, Mary Therese McGivern, who's just been named Outstanding Businesswoman of the Year of 2017 Women in Business Awards. The awards recognise the hard work, dedication and progress of local businesswomen and Mary Therese was chosen out of a record number of entries this year. Our warmest congratulations to her. But that's all from Life at the Met this time. A big thank you to all our guests and to you for watching. Until next time, bye bye and a happy Christmas.